How's it going, everybody? Yeah? Are right, you pumped? All right, good. Cool. So we're talking about data engineering in a rapidly changing world, also known as how to stay relevant in your career. Sort of. So, okay. so who am I? Um, got a pretty good intro on that. Co-author uh, Fundamentals of Data Engineering, um, Recovering Data Scientist. We'll talk about that in a bit. I've um, been working in data for over 20 years, both as an IC and an exec. My um, podcast, um, speak, uh, blog. My um, podcast is Monday Morning Data Chat. Anyway, if you want to go check it out, it's pretty dope. Um, in my spare time, I uh, climb rocks, uh, get out in nature. I, I um, still DJ, surprisingly enough. I read a lot, and uh, there's my horoscope if you're somehow interested in that stuff. Um, so um, today we're going to cover a couple of big themes. Um, first, data engineering. Like, what is it? And um, what's changing, right? Uh, who here feels like the world of data engineering is uh, changing really fast? Right, and who here uh, feels like they know what data engineering is? Great, good thing you attended this conference. You'll um, hopefully come away with at least that. Uh, the second part will be talking about uh, journeys into data engineering um, and um, you know, ways to stay relevant in your career. Who feels like they're uh, keeping up to date on things in their career? Wow, a really confident crowd. This will be, be a lot of fun here, so, okay, let's get going. Um, here's a few reasons why you should care about what we're talking about today. First, data engineering, it's, it's still very immature as a field, right? I mean, it's, it's new-ish. Um, I had a good discussion last night with uh, Zach over here, actually, and uh, we were talking about how um, uh, data in general feels like a very immature field still. Um, so data engineering being a um, subset of that, it's, it's um, still maturing, but it's, um, it's growing. And, but at the same time, the data landscape is rapidly changing. There's all kinds of stuff going on, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and we live in a very crazy world right now. Like, there's just, uh, it seems like um, on any given day, it's like something straight out of the Book of Revelations or <laughs> something like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating time to be alive. Um, but at the same time, you know, you gotta um, stay relevant in your career, right? You just can't uh, kind of hide and um, you know, talk yourself away. So but let's, let's talk about first things like what, what is data engineering? So I'm gonna, you know, I, I kind of like to keep this uh, interactive with the crowd here. So um, what do you think data engineering is? Maybe starting with the group over here. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think that's good. And uh, how about anyone over here wanna uh, talk about what data engineering is or maybe give an idea? Yeah. Moving curation of data, I like that. Anyone else? Going once, twice, yeah, you in the back. Yeah, turning data into something useful for that, uh, technology in the process, I think that's what I heard. Um, so here's my long-winded definition of it. Um, I'll let you read that for about uh, the next, um, let me see, five seconds. And I'll go to the TLDR. So um, basically, you get data from sources, you do something useful to it, then you serve it. I mean, that's literally what data engineering is if you kind of step back and look at what all of us do, right? Um, so notice what, I, what the description is not. This isn't, uh, it's, it's not talking about, oh, uh, data engineering is the use of Kafka and um, Spark, right? And I think that it's, when you look at definitions of data engineering, it gets, um, it's pretty fascinating. I think there's a lot of horrible definitions of data engineering that are very tool focused very technology focused and don't zoom out and focus on the, the fundamental nature of uh, data engineering. And so in the book, what we talk about is the data engineering life cycle. Um, I can't say that the, the notion of a data life cycle is new. I would say the data engineering life cycle is, a, it's, it sort of um, you know, undercuts the entire book that we wrote. But really, you're starting with um, you know, systems that generate data. You know, you're ingesting data, you're transforming it. You're storing it all along the way and you're serving it. Um, you know, maybe for analytics, machine learning, reverse ETL, data sharing, whatever other use cases, right? But along the way, there's things like security. Security doesn't fit neatly into any, you can't just do security in, um, say, storage, right? And then absent everything else. Um, so there's undercurrents, like security, data management, data governance, data ops, architecture, you know, um, orchestration, software engineering. So along the way, you know, these are, these are some of the, um, the practices that you have to adopt um, as a data engineer. So. Who's thought of uh, data engineering as a life cycle, just out of curiosity? Who's, who's thought about it in this sort of a fashion? Of course, Zach has. Um, uh, so, but it, 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 this also brings up a question, so what is a data engineer? Um, 
well, I mean, it's sort of self-explanatory, but I'll, I'll just, uh, here's my also long-winded definition. Um, but you're, you're managing the, the, the data engineering life cycle at the end of the day, right? Um, and again, you get data, do something with it, and serve it. Um, but this is, this is a bit of a misnomer, uh, because everyone here is probably a data, who's a data engineer? I, should, I shouldn't assume everyone's a data engineer, but who's, okay. I assume if you're a data engineering conference, you're probably doing something with data engineering. But we, so we have the word engineer in our title. And I think the, the tendency is for engineers to want to do what? Engineer things. It's literally in, in your title. That, that's, but what I think we find too often is um, you lose a lot of context, um, and I think it, it's easy to um, lose appreciation for the craft of data engineering. Um, you know, immediately when I talk to data engineers, the first thing they talk about is, uh, when, I was, when I solve a problem, what, what tool am I going to grab to solve it without really understanding the problem that you're trying to solve? So along the way, we're going to talk about um, you know, this concept of um, you know, kind of zooming out and, and looking at the big picture um, and how this will um, you know, help you stay relevant in your career as a data engineer. So I mean, data engineering at the end of the day, it, it's about lifecycle management, right? Plain and simple. Kind of a brief uh, you know, history of how we got here as a field. I mean, it, Data engineering as a practice isn't new. Like the, the idea of like getting data from uh, you know, source systems and doing something with it and serving it, like that, that's, that's been around for a long time, right? You know, um, you know, ETL development, uh, BI engineers, right? Anyone heard of these titles? Now, it, it's sort of what happened in data science where like all the um, old titles you know, are basically just uh, lumped into now uh, data science, so analytics, um, uh, you know, predictive optimization, and all this kind of stuff. So in, in much the same way, you know, the, the key things that have happened in, um, you know, that kind of read to the lies, I would say, of modern data engineering circa, you know, 2016 or whatever, and, and to today is, um, you know, the rise of the cloud. It just made it a lot easier for people to adopt technologies, whereas back in the day, you would have to get, you know, potentially multi-million dollar contracts, you know, with uh, big vendors, and uh, implementation was just, um, it was more costly, right? But, you know, Redshift comes along in 2012, and it's 25 cents an hour to spin up a DC2 node, and um, it made things a lot more affordable and approachable. Um, and along the way, you know, data just started scaling. Um, you know, you had the big data movement, um, you know, um, and companies were just doing more with data, and so it, it required a new way of thinking. You couldn't just do traditional data warehousing anymore. You had to think of new systems, and a lot of these companies did. And these technologies and practices, um, you know, grew in popularity and became quite mainstream. It, it's stunning today when I look around the room at the... Uh, the vendors, it's like all this stuff used to be like super complicated, tucked away at large tech companies. Now, it, you know, there's companies that provide all these services. And, um, but that's kind of how we got here as a field. And data engineering, I think, was much, um, you know, a, a response to, you know, the availability of, of practices and new technologies. Um, but that's nice. That's history. We, we know this stuff. What's on the horizon, right? So well, let's talk about that. Um, rapid change, right? So. Who's seen uh, this slide? What's that? It does. I think there's more data startups than there are atoms in the known universe. Um, so, so Matt Turk publishes this every year. I'm not sure if he publishes, he's going to publish another one. Um, but uh, I haven't seen the, is, has anyone seen the 2022 edition yet? Um, anyway, um, it's fascinating though, right? So. Uh, I think when I first saw when I saw the first one in 2012, it was um, it was still incomprehensible, but it was all big data technologies, and none of those technologies really exist anymore, or they got bought, they went out of business, or or something. But you know, it's intentionally large and um, inscrutable. You can't really read this. That's the whole point. And the problem is, this is only like a fraction of the uh, tools out there, right? Um, but it's funny because it's like you you'd be like, okay, so I need like 15 years of experience in every one of these uh, tools. Um, I'm joking. Um, but this is crazy, right? So how would you choose technologies, for example, out of this? So the problem is there's a lot of noise. Um, and so here's some of my observations uh, for where we are right now, actually. So I think, you know, there's going to be a consolidation of, um, of uh, that. You know, the, the new economic climate means that uh, getting funding, it's just going to be harder. So. I would say um, a lot of the companies that you just saw on that uh, data landscape slide are probably going to, um, you know, get eaten by bigger companies or go out of business. Um, you know, so increasing abstraction of tools. This is another one, right? So who who uh, runs a Hadoop stack still? You? Okay, cool. Um, 
Who runs uh, kind of more managed SaaS products in their data engineering workflow or uh, managed services? Right, who um, runs open source? A lot of people, okay, cool, yeah. But again, a, a lot of these uh, tools are becoming increasingly abstract, which means the data engineers are gonna focus more, higher up on the value chain, right? So it's not so much low level programming anymore, it's not so much like managing um, smart clusters, you know, on EC2 instances or, or whatever. Like that's, that's gone, if you're still doing that, more power to you, but um, things have gotten easier. I would also say old school becomes new school. So um, you're starting to see conversations around data modeling, data contracts, and more kind of enterprise-y practices that were once reserved for large corporations. These are now becoming democratized. Who's heard of data catalogs? One person, okay, well, um, I'll move on then. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, who's, who's heard of data modeling? I mean, that's probably a, a better question to ask. So, interesting. Wow, okay, maybe I'm just like very uh, United States-centric. Um, cool. Um, so anyway, what we're seeing, at least in the States then, is um, a lot of these practices that, again, were once reserved for large corporations where you would have the budget and the, you know, the people to, to do this stuff. Now this is um, becoming kind of table stakes um, now that, I mean, you can spin up Snowflake or Databricks, for example, really easy, right? That's, that, you can do that in minutes. Now the, the thing is, like, how do you govern your data? How do you make sense of it? Right? This is like the stuff that I think data engineers are um, gonna be focusing a lot more on. Um, the global recession, too. I mean, there, I think by all accounts, something's happening right now in the uh, global economy and it's slowing down, and this means that, uh, you know, you're gonna have to do more with less. So, uh, at the same time, it's a weird paradox, because like, talent is still hard to get and uh, people are shifting jobs. So, I don't know how to make sense of what I just said with a global recession and uh, talent shifting or, or leaving the workforce, but it is what it is, which means, you know, all of you people are very um, attractive to hire right now. <laughs> So I don't know what will happen next year, uh, but for now, um, that is that is what it is. So I would also say, um, you know, land that job uh, right now, because um, you may not be able to do that next year, so. <laughs> um, you know, and the other big theme I see happening is because of, um, the cloud is interesting. I think it introduced a lot of um, easy to use tools, easy to use practices, but the problem is uh, costs are spiraling, spiraling out of control, right? So if you're, um, you know, running, uh, platform X over here, platform Y and Z over here, right? How do you make sense of your costs? Um, this is a huge, huge problem. I would say that, um, you know, the cloud vendors, they provide you with very minimal um, insight into your uh, billing and budgets. I think that they, their interests are at heart to, you know, make sure that you're um, not overspending, but at the same time, cost management, especially when you're dealing with, you know, multiple applications and tying them together. This is a big area of, um, I think, interest. You're gonna see a lot more about FinOps, who's sort of FinOps, yeah? Cool, yeah, you're gonna hear a lot more about this, so, um, for a lot of reasons. I mean, it, it just needs to happen, and also, you know, with, with the economy slowing down and CFOs breathing down the necks of the IT departments and tech teams, it's like, this is, it is what it is, so. And finally, data engineers just need to add, um, you're gonna be expected to add more value with less. Um, that's how it is, so. Well, let's talk about career paths for a second. I mean, there's a big hint it's not uniform. So who, who here went to a data engineering school? Data Engineering University over in Sydney. It's a, it's a real thing, I, I, I went there, I'm just kidding. I made it up. What's that? I don't know of any. I'm, work, the only, I'm working on courses right now for universities, some pretty big names, and like, uh, based on the book. Um, I've not really seen data engineering uh, courses even, but that's, it's starting to change, but you know, it's a joke, it doesn't exist, right? Um, like everyone here, I'm pretty sure you got into data engineering through some sort of side channel, right? You came in through engineering, analytics, data science, maybe you were, um, I don't know, an Uber driver or something and decided to become, an, whatever, I mean, it's, it's weird. You'll, you'll see my career path in a bit that makes absolutely no sense. Um, so, uh, let, me, let me just ask a couple of people here. How did you, how did you get into data engineering? Uh, maybe somebody over here. Uh, you, uh, who uh, is running the Hadoop sack. No, uh, the, the gentleman um, right here. Yeah, how did you get into data engineering? Yeah. Okay, cool. So COBOL to data engineering, right? And so, um, how did you get into data engineering? Me? Yeah, whoever said me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> My was, I was working with uh, performance testing and a friend of mine called, oh, I need a guy in here, and I have no performance testing, and I said, hey, read mine, I can learn this thing. Right. <laughs> Congratulations, that's awesome. 
So, I mean, what we're seeing is like most career paths are nonlinear, right? They make no sense at the time, right? But they make sense um, in retrospect. When you look behind it, you see your career arc and you're like, yeah, I mean, it, was, it made perfect sense why I would be sitting here today at a data engineering conference, right? Yeah. Um, my journey into data engineering, well, I mean, I grew up programming in the 80s. Um, you know, I was an 80s kid. I was a professional rock climbing, uh, uh, more of like a professional rock climbing bum for a while. Um, so I just traveled around the States climbing. I used to DJ clubs. Um, a lot, right? So, um, still do. Um, you know, I got a math degree. I, uh, you know, ran businesses, ran business units, um, both as an individual contributor and as an executive. Um, you know, I've been doing predictive analytics and ML for a really long time. Um, I was about to become an actuary back in the late 90s and decided I didn't want to do that to myself. And so, um, you know, and, and that's where, you know, I came up with the uh, idea of being a recovering data scientist, right? Um, getting involved in a data science projects and then you don't have any data and you're kind of like, well, how's that gonna work? And people say, well, you know, I guess you're gonna have to get that too. And then you become a data engineer, right? Does it sound familiar to people? Who, who, uh, who's been a data scientist and then you had to build the systems to get your data and all of a sudden you magically find your cost hub, yeah, and other people, right. So it, data engineering, I think, is, is what became as much of a necessity as anything because you couldn't do your job. Because <laughs> at the time, this is back in the 2010s, it's like there's no one to do it. Along the way, I wrote a book. You know, what I, what I realized with fundamentals of data engineering was um, there was no comprehensive playbook for data engineering, right? If you're trying to define data engineering, how would you do that, right? And, how, and then you're trying to define the entire field. Uh, this becomes a very fascinating exercise, and I think that um, it was a hard book to write as a result, right? And, um, but data engineering is uh, popular now, and, and here we are. So let's talk about staying relevant. Um, the rubric that I, I, I like to look at is um, people, process, and then technology. Who's heard of people, process, technology? I'm pretty sure a lot of people have, yeah. Um, I was thinking a lot about this. I'm writing an article right now, um, and it's about a lot of the themes that I've seen in data over the, the decades I've been in it, and it's, it's really twofold. First, um, can I trust the data, right? And do I believe it? Do you, do you believe your data? Do you trust your data? This is a pretty grim uh, laughter. I, I <laughs> um, tell me more about this, actually. Why, 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 why laugh? It's correct What's that? It's correct, it's correct except when it isn't. Wow. Okay. Um, any anyone else? That's uh, that's there's a lot that you want there. Kasim. Mm. It's very difficult to tell, is there actually a bias in the data that makes my data not valuable? Or is it pointing me in a direction that I don't want to go and I'm not willing to listen to that? Right. Um, so it's very hard to discern that's a behavioral system or necessarily a data system. But sometimes it is a data system. So right. That's interesting. You know, I, was, I was talking a couple of weeks ago with Bill Inman about this. And I asked him, um, so he's the father of the data warehouse, um, uh, just if you don't know who he is. And he, his career uh, spans, um, you know, many, many decades. I, I think uh, he, he's, um, you know, he kind of helped create the data industry. And I asked him, you know, what's your, what's your true north, right? And, and, and Bill said, you know, I, I, uh, do you have b believable data? And believable data was his true north, right? And, and it's interesting because that, that's been the theme of his career for, um, since the 60s, I think, or, you know? And so why is it as an industry, we're, we're still asking the same questions, right, about, trustworthy data, believable data. Um, but let's assume you can trust the data, right? Then I guess it's a, it's a question of, well, I mean, do I get any value out of it, right? So who gets value out of their data? Some people? Hold that thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but these, you know, keep in mind these questions as you, as you go through your career. It's like, these, these are the themes, and I notice, notice themes in your career, I would say. Like, notice the questions people ask. And you know, a decade from now, or two decades, or 15,000 decades, or whatever, in your career, notice the patterns, right? Or are these the same questions and the same themes that keep popping up? If they are, um, then you'll realize this is sort of the, uh, the essence of the data industry. This is why we're all here, because it helps all these problems. But this is a people problem at the end of the day, right? Um, and I think all too often what happens is we, we don't get out and talk with stakeholders. We don't understand the needs of people, um, and we don't really collaborate with them. We, we instead, back to the engineering point, we want to focus on engineering because that's in our title. We engineer things. We don't talk to people. 
there's the old joke, you know, how do, how do you know that the, um, you know, an engineer is an, uh, an extrovert? I mean, he stares at your shoes instead of staring at his, so. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, that, it's, it's, this is very much uh, the case, and all, all too often what I see is, you know, 90% of uh, issues with engineering as a field could be solved by just going and doing a simple conversation with people, just understand, like, what do you, what do you need, right? How do people uh, scope things right now? How do, you, how do you get requirements? I'll just ask a random group over here. How do, how do you figure out what people want? One question and one answer. Okay. How about over here? Yeah? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it just, I mean, the simple thing is get out to talk, but that's, that's also like the hardest part, right? So at the end, they focus on, uh, you know, there's, there's this idea of the customer, right? And, and data products, you know, these are two buzzwords right now. Customer's not really a buzzword, that's just like something you should focus on. Um, but again, you know, focus on the customer. What do they want? Build products that they want. Uh, a really wealthy friend of mine asked him, how do you make a lot of money? And he's like, well, you just sell people things that they want to buy. I was like, cool, it's, it's, it's that easy. So. Um, it's also really hard, right? Now let's focus on process. Um, I think, again, we have the word engineering in our title, and what this means is we want to do engineering things. We want to focus on the tools. All too often what I see is we don't focus on the underlying uh, first principles and fundamentals, right? So who, who understands how a database works at a fundamental level, right? Um, Right, so who knows how operating systems work, right? So these are the things where I think if you understand just like the, the nuggets and um, you know, the ideas and the, and the core concepts of these things, it makes it a lot easier to, to evaluate tools along the data engineering life cycle. Um, all too often, um, again, we, we reach for the tools instead of thinking about the first principles and the fundamentals of, of our craft, right? Um, Charlie Munger, he's uh, Warren Buffett's business partner, he has a really good quote. Um, here, the best way to achieve wisdom is to learn the big ideas that underlie reality. Um, even people who aren't geniuses can outthink the rest of mankind if they develop certain thinking habits, which means just understand, again, first principles, fundamentals. Um, so, I mean, don't overthink things, right? Uh, don't, don't. Our, our tendency as engineers is we want to be too clever, right? We, we, we want to, we want to seem like we're the smartest person in the room instead of the most effective person. Well, oftentimes, solutions to technical problems are really simple, um, or they should be simple. It, you know, sometimes they are complex for a reason, but I would say a lot of, if you work at a, a regular company, it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel. I, I think all too often people think that they're, um, you know, they're, it's super special and I have to engineer this just this way. And I, I would challenge you probably don't, actually. Uh, most cases I see that it's, um, it, it's a lot of busy work. So, so focus on fundamentals and, and use fundamentals to do the heavy lifting for you. Again, think of things about the, you know, think of the data engineering life cycle, right? These are the fundamentals. I would say as much as possible, focus on things that won't change as quickly. Um, so data warehousing, right? That's a, that's a big concept. It's been around for a long time. How, who, who's read the uh, canonical books uh, like Building the Data Warehouse um, or Data Warehouse Toolkit and understand data warehousing at a fundamental level? I, I would urge the audience to, to read these books. I would also urge you to, um, you know, read, uh, books in the field of like Lean, for example. If you want to know where DevOps and Data Ops and ML Ops and any Ops comes from, it's from the field of Lean. Who's heard of Lean? Right? It's about streamlining processes, about streamlining your thinking. And, and these are the fundamental practices that won't change. Lean, I, I, in, in Melbourne, I was listening to a talk, um, and uh, you know, the, uh, the keynote was talking about um, uh, the Dora framework at, at Google and how that's um, you know, used for software. And what I found was interesting is the the principle is about um, you know, reducing downtime, reducing errors, um, you know, increasing uptime, and, and uh, delivery. Like, these are all concepts that are from Lean. Right? So I'd, I'd urge you to go back and read the original books. Lean Thinking is a great book. Um, it came out in 1996. Uh, you know, I reread it recently, and I was like, this is still as relevant today as, as it was yesterday. Um, you know, uh, you know, lean on the big ideas. I mean, these are the fundamentals of data engineering. But it is a balancing act, right? So you have to think about today and the future. So if you focus too much on today, focus too much on the past, you're going to miss out on um, you know, some pretty interesting things that are um, on the horizon. Um, so choose a handful of technologies that you work with you know, and master them, right? Uh, as long as they solve your problem. Um, it's, um, 
I think all too often what I see too are data engineers, they, they will pick technologies and they um, only try and approach it from the, uh, the aspect of what do I need to do my job today. I would urge you all to, to, to I don't know, dive into the docs, dive into how does this platform or technology want to be used. Um, AWS is a really good example, right? Like they, um, th there's the way you think you should use AWS or, or Azure, then there's, um, then there's a way that they probably want you to use it. I would urge you to find the, the way that they want you to use it. It'll save you a lot of headache. Um, same with um, you know, Snowflake, Databricks, any other tools here. Um, but if, if you're going to adopt technologies, make sure that everyone on your team masters the big ideas behind these. It'll save you a lot of time. It's shocking how little this happens. How many here feel like they, they have complete mastery over the tools that they use? It's also good you're honest with yourselves. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it's, it's also pretty shocking how many people are like, yeah, I'm like an expert in like everything. It's cool. So, um, you know, and again, pay attention to what's on the horizon. I mean, there's some really cool stuff. I'll give you an example. So um, um, one of my friends, Jordan Tagani, he um, is a person who co-created BigQuery. I think he's a founding engineer at BigQuery. And you know, he, his name is very much attached to big data, right? What I find fascinating is he's now working on small data. He's working on, um, he has this company called Mother Duck, and uh, it's using DuckDB for um, local uh, analytics processing on your machine using uh, DuckDB and Wasm. So if that takes off, I think that's gonna be a game changer, like big. But, but again, that's small data, right? Like we're all thinking about big data sets. And he's, he's like, yeah, I already did that. I'm gonna go focus on like small data sets because that's what most people have, right? Who has, who has a, who, who thinks they work with big data here? Yeah, and maybe some of you do, right? But if the question is what's big, it's all relative. Um, but what I, what I see going on is that that's a big trend. Um, you know, FinOps is the other big trend. Um, you know, I, I think the, uh, the worlds of um, you know, ML and uh, data engineering are, are gonna be colliding uh, you know, much, more, um, you know, much more hard soon. So um, you know, there's this old saying here, um, uh, from Stuart Brand, uh, technologist in the U.S., but once a new technology rolls over, you're, um, if you're not part of the steamroller, you're part of the road. So, you know, beware of the steamroller of technology. So, he says some other ways to stay relevant. Let's think about that. Um, you know, focus on things that add value to your company, right? So, value is this, like, value is a trigger word. It's, it, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, I think when you talk about, um, in the context of lean, uh, the word value really means like what does a customer want at the end of the day? Like that's literally the only thing that matters for value. It's not what you want, it's not what your team wants, it's like what does the end user want, a customer? Um, you know, and, and this, this, this idea comes from uh, an old book called The Peter Principle. Um, it, the, the idea behind the book is uh, each and every one of us is gonna reach the highest level of our incompetence in our career, where we can go no further. And so you may have already hit it, but you know, you'll find out when you get your next promotion and you're absolutely terrible at it. <laughs> So, and, and what, what makes this work is, um, you know, what, 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 he, what he talked about was, uh, you know, what you know is only 10% of the game, right? Your, pro your career progression and how you move ahead is more dependent upon the people that you know and the people who can help you move up, whether that's your network, whether that's somebody who can sponsor you in an organization. So just keep this in mind. All too often what I find is our engineers, they, they just want to kind of hunker down and do engineering things, which is great. You will not reach the full potential of your career doing that. So, again, this is some made-up number, but, you know, um, take it for what it's worth. So, I would say, you know, play the long game, too, right? Um, hopefully you're in this field for a long time, or hopefully, you're, you know, you're in technology for a long time, but you gotta take the long view, right? So, keep your reputation in mind. Uh, you know, don't do stupid things. Um, you know, try not to blow up production too much. Uh, that's not a good look. Um, you know, but, you know, you got, you got decades ahead of you. And so always, always understand, like, you know, where, where am I trying to go? Where is the industry going? Uh, how does, um, you know, how is what I'm doing today going to impact where I am five years from now, right? So this comes down to continuous learning. Who, who feels like they, uh, they learn a lot? Who reads a lot? Half the room, okay, that's good. Um, you know, and build your networks, too. Like, continuously build the, the people. Like, you're all here. You could have caught this online. Why are you all here? I don't, why, why did you all show up? I'm just asking. Um, networking, right? So is that important to everybody here, or did you, did you show up because your employer told you to show up? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but it's, it's key, right? I mean, I, I would say all the opportunities I've had in my career are just from simply knowing people. That's it. Nothing more. And the, and the things I've learned 
in my career have been through knowing people and just learning from them. Like nothing happens in a vacuum. So knowledge is very much an interact interactive game. So you know, let's, let's wrap things up here and get some questions. Um, so we covered what data engineering is and what data engineers do. Um, we talked about uh, you know, rapid change, um, uh, career paths, and staying relevant. So hopefully this is useful to you. Um, you can also join me on LinkedIn. Just take a picture of my QR code um, if you'd like. Um, you know, connect with me there. And yeah, I'm um, open to questions. We have about nine minutes left. And thank you. Oh, hi. I'll admit my ignorance. What is FinOps? Uh, it's um, financial ops. <laughs> so uh, basically, it's, um, it's operationalizing uh, cost management across your stack. So, yeah. Hi, Joe. Um, very nice. Uh, Can you turn the mic up a bit? I can't hear him. Thanks. Hi, Joe. Um, I've got a question regarding um, inheriting legacy uh, data technologies and, and choosing the way forward, like the, ne the next data stack. Like, how do we, how would you approach um, how you would look at, well, what's current and support, supporting current while also moving towards. Sorry, there's like a big echo. I can't hear anything he's saying. Maybe. Can you speak without the mic? I might be able to hear you better. Um, it, it's a good question. So uh, I would say as much, po as much as possible, cut through um, vendor marketing and pitches. Sorry to all the vendors here. Um, but. There's a lot of good blogs out there. I would say, um, you know, Ben Stansel is a really good person to follow. Chad Sanderson is awesome. Follow me too. Um, uh, there, I think there's a lot of people who aren't um, encumbered by vendor pitches who are, are, I think, really focused on, you know, what, what's next? What are the problems in the world of data? And I think that's as much of a good place to start. In terms of what's next, um, you know, one of my friends, she, she's a VC. Um, she focuses a lot on reading uh, academic journals, right? More in the field of ML and, and databases and such. I think it's also a good way to, to look at things. The problem is there's like, um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of articles that come out, and so picking the right ones are tricky. Uh, I, I subscribe to a lot of newsletters as well. Um, so I, on my weekends, I'm not joking, I have about 50 to 60 articles queued up that I read every weekend. Yeah, Kasif. Hey, um, so I guess you talked a fair bit about how a lot of this comes from multidisciplinary backgrounds and people that come to it from ML engineering or recovering data scientists. What's the, I guess, the smell that you sniff for when you realize, hang on, we need to focus on our data engineering when you're talking about a company or a team or some kind of project? What's that trigger that says we haven't focused on this enough? Yeah, I, I think that, so the question was about, um, you know, if I'm hearing you correct, um, you know, with ML, if you're a data engineer, how do you know when you need to focus on data engineering first instead of jumping straight um, into ML? Well, I think when the discussion is, in, is about, let's, uh, you've heard the business requirement, and then the, the next question is, okay, so what model are we going to build, right? Or what does the dashboard look like for this? It's absolutely the worst question to ask. <laughs> so, because um, you, you haven't thought about um, the entire life cycle of how you're going to get there. So I, I, I would say, like, maybe build an early prototype of that. Though. That doesn't mis prevent you from doing that. But I would say don't stop there, because prototypes have a weird way of becoming production. Has anyone seen this before? How many people are babysitting uh, prototypes that are now in production? <laughs> All of you. Uh, that's what I thought. And the ones who aren't raising your hand, I know you're lying. So, um, so that, I, that's a smell test I would use. Like, th does it seem like you're jumping the gun, I think, is like how I would look at this. Like, are you just like, immediately saying, let's do ML? You know, the first thing, I mean, I, I come from ML background, so I can sniff that out like a, like a heat-seeking missile. So, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for writing the book on data engineering. Uh, do you reckon there's going to be certifications coming in the future? Say again? Uh, do you reckon there will be certifications or professional associations or other forms of governance like you'd find with law or accounting for data engineering? I, I, I think in general with certifications in the data industry, I hope this um, happens to some extent. Um, but it's a tricky thing, though, right? Um, I, 
I, I think in, in fields like dentistry or medicine or um, even being an actuary, like you have to be, um, you know, licensed to do this stuff, at least in, the, in America. I, I think with data, it would at least be good to have, this is something that's been on my mind a lot lately, is I, I feel like the way that we hire data teams is broken. Um, it has been for a long time. So if you were to create a sports team um, from scratch, how would you do that? Would you, would you go to random people on the street and would you ask, hey, you look like you're really good at running. Um, would you like to be on our World Cup team? Um, would you, and you can kick a ball, sort of, like, sort of. Um, and you can bounce a ball on your head, right? Like, I'm talking about uh, you know, your version of football, not mine. Um, but, I mean, this is how we hire uh, people for data teams right now, right? It's like, oh, you know SQL, and you kind of know how to spell database. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll put you on the team. You, you can write uh, 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 code, um, you know, and you have a pet Python snake, so you'll, you'll, you can join our team, too. It's like, it, it's insane how we hire people. And then we don't train them, right? So if you're a sports team, do you spend your time training a lot? Probably, I'd hope so. Um, we don't do this as, a team, as an industry, typically. It's like we throw people into the job, expect them to figure it out. There's no standards. There's no body of knowledge. There's no like, core competencies that we're, uh, we're standardizing on. It drives me insane. And I think this is one of the problems in our industry right now, is that we... We take for granted that, oh, because we've hired a data engineer, um, you know, we can start doing data engineering things. But every team is different. Every team should have standards. Every team should have a body of knowledge. And, and I think this would, would prevent a lot of mistakes that you know, consulting companies like myself um, you know, hired to go fix. Um, so yeah. Um, so to, for certifications, I would say maybe. Um, it, it needs to be done in, 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 a, in a way that I think isn't, um, doesn't become some like, rent-seeking organization on itself. Um, which is entirely possible. So, like, like yeah. Sorry, hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question. I mean, when you say to master something, how can we master something which changes every second? I mean, technology and all this keeps changing, right? Yeah. So, what, what basic thing and data engineering to be mastered about? Um, Again, I, you know, selfishly, I would say read my book and learn the data engineering lifecycle. Um, but it, I, we think of our book as a, a prequel to, um, you know, maybe Martin Kletman's book, uh, Designing Data Intensive Applications. Uh, I think that that also covers a lot of the fundamentals of maybe distributed systems and, um, you know, more lower level computing. You know, and, and other, good, other good things to read, um, you know, understand databases and just how they work, different types of databases. Know, know the innards of them. Know how... Um, you know, know how event processing systems work, right? Streaming. Um, when would you want to use a message queue versus a stream, right? Like these are the sort of things you just need to educate yourself on. And this is not a technology. This is not a, a technology-specific answer. It's like just step back, understand. Okay, so what is what is stream processing? How does that work? And what is it? And when would I use it? Um, so understand that you know the the fundamentals of, of the technology as well as the context in which you're going to deliver those um, technologies. So we have one, time for one more question. Uh, could I just extend on the question that the gentleman on the corner asked around like professional bodies and certifications in terms of like ethics though as well? Do you see it of, like future where there's like ethics around data science and data engineering and you know you can be in like kicked out if you kind of like disobey those ethics and moving towards that kind of chartership like that? Yeah, ethics is a weird thing, right? So I, I would argue that um, I, I think it's a it's a moving target, and it, it has um, I, and I believe that. We should focus on ethics, but it needs to be done within the, the realm of what, what is the context of the ethics, right? So the ethics and maybe where I live and where I work may not be the same as for all of you, right? And maybe certain other countries, like China, ethics are treated differently than they would be in Australia, right? And so I think it's a very much, it's a contextual thing. Um, and so that's how I would answer that. But I, I think that there do need to be um, Potentially some standards, again, depending on who's implementing them. Again, the problem with standards is they take on a life of their own through an organization that then has its own incentives, right? And that's the danger of a lot of this stuff, whether it's certifications, whether they're standards boards. Now they have their own incentives to keep maintaining standards, whether you like it or not. And so I would say that's the thing I would caution on. So I'm sick of up for time, but thank you very much.